Hey guys, I'm back today and today we're talking about how to surrender when you're used to being a boss. So as you guys remember, I was talking about how I split up. This was at the Incarnate Intensive for those of you guys that were there. I was talking about how I like to split up my year into four to six mini years. And the reason that I started doing this a few years ago is because I am a super impatient person and a year is too long of goal setting for me. I get bored, I get impatient. And so what I started doing was chopping up my year into several years and that just kept the year exciting and um, was able to like have bigger and better goals. And without even realizing it, I just started quantum leaping because it was like all the the year was always starting and ending in new years so anyways long story short this is the last week of march so we here at team universe grew are closing out our first year inside of 2024 and so this week is new year's eve celebrations for us and april 1st we start the second year and as i was closing out this new year's celebration i have been journaling a lot about everything that happened in the last three months, everything that I quantum leaped and manifested and all of that stuff. And what I found was that as I was journaling about that, my mind also kept going to 16, 17 years ago when like, I feel like it was like a second life for me when I discovered the law of attraction. The law of attraction is a very important part of my life because it was through the law of attraction that I found God and through God, I found the law, the inner work. And through inner work, I found surrender. And surrender has been this beautiful, beautiful learning and deep unlearning of other things as well for me. And this is something that a lot of modern day women struggle with. I really struggled with this too, because our culture and society teaches us that, you know, we have to do everything by ourselves that you know if we've got to get it done right we've got to do it by ourselves there's so many so many of those sayings right it's turned a lot of us modern day women into control freaks it's turned us into solo te like a, a party of one even though we have people around us that want to love us that want to support us that want to be on in our team we're like no 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 you know i've got to do everything myself and the concept of surrender, I think is so misunderstood because a lot of people think that surrender means that you have to submit to someone or that you have to be second in command. I actually once years ago looked up the definition and it was like, you have to like throw in the, you have to like throw in the weapons or it was like, it was not pretty. And I was like, okay, I see why so many people are, are just turned off by the word surrender. What I've learned through my journey is that you actually cannot be a boss. You actually cannot really be in control until you learn to surrender. So surrender is letting God do God's part while you do your part. It's not like giving up. It's not being second in command. It's not being the co-pilot. It's like, okay, I'm going to do my part, the things that I am the master of, the things that are in my zone of genius, and God does God's part. So think of it this way, like if you were, you know, working in a company, there would be, there would be like levels, there's hierarchy, right? And so everyone has some kind of a boss, like even if you were the ultimate boss, you, there might be short shareholders that you have to answer to, right? There's always some kind of a hierarchy. Well, what if you decided that there was no hierarchy, that you were just going to do everyone's job? Well, the co entire company would collapse. You would actually lose control. You would not be a boss anymore because you couldn't be a team player, right? And, and even the people you would have hired, if you couldn't surrender to their leadership in the realm that you hired them, then your company wouldn't even make it. But a lot of us are trying to do this in our marriage. We're trying to do this in our household. We're trying to do this in our careers. But there's only so far you can go. There's a saying 
It's actually an African proverb, uh, proverb that says, if you want to, hopefully I'm not going to butcher this. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. Surrender is when you decide that you're actually, you want to go far and you're going to go together. And so one thing that I've learned, and I want to teach you guys this today, is that surrender is a decision. So you decide to surrender and it's also a embodiment. So what I want you to do for a second is relax your body. Okay. One thing you can do if you need help relaxing is just wherever you're sitting, like let that chair table, uh, not table, you're probably not sitting on a table, chair, bed, floor, take you. Because a lot of times when we're used to having control and everything, we can't surrender. We like hold our body tight. So just relax your body for a second. Get super loose. Let your body just relax and flow. And you're going to drop your energy into your cervix if you're a woman and into the soles of your feet if you are a man. Just put your awareness and your attention there. Keep it there for another couple of seconds. Congratulations, you have just surrendered. That is it. That is it. I know that we tend to overcomplicate things. Our brain adds a whole bunch of things to the mix, but that is it. That is you surrendering. Years ago, I had gotten a comment under a post that I had made about surrendering. This is like a long time ago. And I was very confused by the comment and I read it a couple times and then I finally figured it out. I was like, oh my God, she thinks you have to surrender to a person. That was like the first time I realized that that's what other people were thinking. Surrender is just simply a embodiment. It's just something you do. Just like, um, what would be another example of this? Blinking. You don't have to blink to another person. Her comment was something along the lines of, well, it's easy for you to surrender because you, you're married to a great man. That would be like saying, it's easy for you to blink because you're married to a great man. Yes, my husband is fantastic, but I don't think that's why I blink. Okay, so your surrender, your ability to surrender has nothing to do with the person in front of you, who you're married to, your nationality, your culture, none of that. It is something that you just do internally through a decision that you make. For example, I can decide to blink right now. I can decide to shake my head side to side, front and back, and I can decide to surrender. I just did it right now. <laughs> it literally just doing it right now. That's it. That's literally it. Now, I know some of you guys really like to overcomplicate things. So if you're that type that you're like, no, I need more than that. That was literally like the million dollar surrender embodiment exercise. But if you need to take it a little bit step further, I'll give you something to do on top of it. So this is your homework. And then I'm going to share with you sort of like the vlog portion of this and, and share little bits uh, from my outing with my kids. But your homework is Take a piece of paper, you could just rip it out from your notebook or leave it in your journal and just uh, uh, like make it into two pieces, right? I think I shared this, I'm trying to think whether in the Lady Balls journal or in the um, Contained as Love journal, but I have this exercise somewhere in one of the books. You're gonna write on one half, my job, and on the other half, God's job. And if you don't resonate with the word God, not a problem. You can put universe's job or life's job or the quantum field's job, whatever higher power 
words you resonate with. The words are not important. It's just the meaning that you assign to it. So I resonate with the word God. I also use the word universe interchangeably. So just use the one that you're comfortable with. So your job, God's job. Okay. So an example of this is it is not my personal responsibility as Mina Irfan to keep the earth rotating. Like I just have to basically trust that God's got that part figured out and that my input is not necessary. Like I don't wake up every morning concerned that the sun isn't going to shine today or the earth isn't going to rotate, right? So if you have nothing else to put on the side, you could write God's job, make sure the earth uh, rotates, make, so, make sure the sun shines, right? My job, feel good, be open to receiving, keep my vibration high, show up and do the tasks that I'm assigned to do on this planet, take care of the things that are my responsibility. And so fill this out and maybe you're not going to get it perfectly in one go. Like you never do, right? Like you're going to add to it. It's a living, breathing, evolving document, like literally everything in your journal. And every single day when you find yourself hustling, grinding, stressing, taking control, can't relax, any of those things, go back to either this practice that I just showed you, surrender practice, or the list, or both, and just remind yourself that you don't have to do everything by yourself. In fact, you aren't doing everything by yourself. You might be thinking, but there is a lot of things that we have generally outsourced because we have no control over them anyways. For example, my heart is just beating on its own. I don't have to control that. I don't have to manipulate that in any way. I just have to trust that it will keep beating until God decides that it doesn't need to beat anymore. So there is a lot of things that we already surrender without even realizing it. And so now we're just becoming intentional and we are choosing to surrender things that we don't have control over anyways, or we have control over what we don't want to. That's the other thing that I've learned, that there are so many things that I simply do not care about, right? I don't want those things as open windows in my life. If you're not sure about open windows, I talked about this in another video, uh, why it's so difficult to be feminine, something like that. I will link it in the description box for you. So again, there's a lot of reasons where you don't want to be doing those things anyways. You're not good at them. You're exhausted. You're tired. You want someone else to do them. It would feel good to receive those things. Then surrender those things. Literally make a decision to surrender those things. In fact, sometimes I find myself wanting to make a comment or a um, give an opinion about something that my husband's doing or my children are doing. And I'm like, I'll just drop in before I open my mouth. I'll just drop in, surrender, just go into my cervix and just surrender the thing. And then I realized that there was no point. There was no point. They're going to figure it out. They're going to do it the way that they like to do it. And it, it, seeing them as capable and surrendering the thing is so much more just a high vibration way of being for me and for them. And after I drop in, if after that I still find low, I really need to give my opinion on that then I say the thing. But just adding a little bit space in between your actions, your reactions, your thoughts, your opinions is just such a beautiful um, embodiment of feminine surrender. And I think this is great for men and women. Just like women have mascul uh, masculine energy and need it, men also need doses of feminine energy. So I think this is great for both. And so that is my surrender practice. Now I'm going to insert some clips. So uh, my children and I went to um, the mall today. We had lunch. Irfan had a financial conference to go to with his best friend. I told you he does a lot of these financial conferences. He learns something every day. I'm sure when he comes, he's going to be telling me all kinds of things about it. I just lo love that he's just as much into like financial um, development as I am into inner work development because that way we get to bring those things to each other so anyways he went with his friend to the conference and so I took the kids to the mall hey guys we are headed to the mall to do some shopping and have some lunch and I'll try to show you my outfit 
And we had a blast shopping. Uh, we were we they wanted to look at some shoes, so we did that. I ended up doing some shopping, but not all of it was for me. I think most of it was for other people actually. So I'm not gonna show that because I don't want it, them to see the things before I end up actually giving it to them. I also want to just quickly announce that yesterday we opened the cart for our Europe intensive. I know a lot of you guys have been asking for a Europe event. We had one in Lisbon, Portugal in 2022, and then we haven't had one in Europe since then. And so in July, we're actually all going to... Uh, you know budapest to do an intensive there and it's going to be fabulous the bonuses that i'm adding with the budapest intensive are actually a few like several times more than the price of admission in the early bird pricing so if this is calling out to you i made it a no-brainer with the bonuses the bonus are literally over seven thousand dollars so you're like getting many times uh, the value just in the bonuses which will unlock in July and also I am offering a four-month payment plan for this the reason I'm doing a personal payment plan is because uh, the payment plan that's offered through our Thinkific platform unfortunately is only for USA citizens or not citizens residents and because this is a Europe intensive I realized that my European people are not going to be able to take advantage of those payment plans so I'm doing a four-month payment plan for you guys you can find that through scrolling on the sales page and it's linked in the description box and I actually mostly just bought stuff for my kids and for my family and friends it was it was like a gift shopping day today and so I only got one thing for myself and it was this perfume. I think it's pronounced, I hopefully I'm not going to butcher it. I'll just show you. It's pronounced Baccarat Rouge 540. So I have kind of a funny story with this perfume because a friend of mine recommended that I was going to like this. We were having the conversation that since I went to Dubai and Turkey, uh, in October for my intensive, my smell palette has completely changed. For like the last 20 some years, I have been very consistently wearing the same perfumes. And like I had a signature perfume for like decades and then I added a few more, but they were kind of like predictable. So predictable that Alina would like smell a perfume and be like, mommy, you're gonna like this one. And I would. When I went to Turkey and Dubai, I don't know what happened. My palette just completely changed. And when I came back from that trip, I also bought like so many perfumes in that during that trip. But when I came back, like I'm no longer attracted towards the perfumes that I was usually attracted towards. And so anyways, and the ones that I normally didn't like, I'm now buying. So I was having this conversation with a friend and telling her the ones I recently bought. And she was like, oh, if you like those, you're gonna love this one. So I smelled this a couple of times and I was so confused because every time I would smell it, I felt like it smelled different. Sometimes I would like it and sometimes I wouldn't like it. Come to find out, there's two versions of this. There's like the oil version, which has like extra notes. That one I didn't like for some reason. That was like the old Mina would have liked that. This one, the... Rouge 540, the white, the clear bottle, I love, obsessed with. I still probably have some on me. Yes, I do. So anyways, I ended up getting this for myself. It's like a gift set kind of thing so that it's it's really pretty. And when I open it, I'll show you guys maybe in another video. But anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give this a thumbs up. I will be doing more of these like recorded type of videos. I have, I made a list. I just had this huge creative inspiration yesterday and I just have like this crazy list of new videos that I want to do. Some are what you would expect and predict from me, but there's like some ideas that I've never done before that I'm excited about doing. For example, I'm going to share an idea. So I only share about like 
10 to 20 percent of the vacations that my family goes on i don't know why since i've been doing youtube i've like kept a lot of my life like especially like my marriage and my like family life private and i like have always like shied away from showing more but i just woke up yesterday i'm like why not like i want to share more of our travels and vacations and so i made the decision that i'm going to share the future travels but then i like well why don't i just go back i have all the pictures and like some even clips that we take just for the family why don't i go back take some of those vacations and do like a talk to through video and i thought that would be really fun because there um there's like different things that happened during those trips things that manifested from those vacations um even sharing like bits about how to plan luxury travel and um tips and tricks that um I, it's like hard to find like i feel like a lot of times it personally what i've seen is a lot of travel content is geared towards buddy budget friendly stuff and there was a time in our lives when we needed that but i don't see as much content on like luxury travel i'm, I'm sure it's there but like i want to share that transition that we made and like the inner work that was required and the container expansion so i've been going through our pictures and videos and i'm like um like deciding which like how i'm gonna make turn this into like a little collage so it's gonna be fun it's kind of it reminds me like old school when uh people used to have like home videos uh with like the big bulky camcorders or whatever so i'm gonna go back and start putting some of those videos together for you guys and i have a whole bunch of other ideas i don't want to take make this too long but anyways i love you i hope you enjoyed this and I will see you in Budapest and some of you guys next week in Orange County for Sheena's birthday intensive. Anyways, this is way too long. I love you. Bye.